Hey folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and it's the Wild West out there, man. Who knows? So this is just a... I was going to make separate videos, but I'm going to combine things into one. One, in a strange decision, Wizards of the Coast or whoever decided to let Deadline know that they're greenlit an eight-episode uh, live-action series for Paramount+. Plus. I'd probably wait till my entire fandom wasn't deciding whether or not they were going to burn me in a dumpster or, you know, maybe see if there's something they could do to apologize. But either way, the guy who did Red Notice, uh, the Netflix movie with The Rock and Ryan Reynolds, he is the kind of, I guess he's set to script and direct the first episode which is going to be a co-production between Entertainment One and Paramount Pictures. Now, this is nothing new. We have heard about this, although we did think that it was going to kind of be... Sorry, my hair is doing a weird thing. Put on my headphones and it doesn't look so bad. <laughs> um, and, and then uh, we thought it was maybe going to go away, given the fact that Entertainment One was going to be sold by Hasbro. Um, it, you know, and basically uh, Paramount Plus is big thing that they have was the Halo series, which I guess was very popular for them. Uh, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. So, uh, they guess, yeah, they're looking to sell this off. I didn't realize that Red Notice was Netflix, Netflix's most watched film of all time. I really didn't even have the interest to go see it myself. And it's like, I don't even have to go see it. I just turn on my Netflix, but either way, uh, I probably would have not announced this today. Uh, again, maybe this is, it says exclusive. So, um, I, I guess it was really just broken this morning. Uh, another thing that I should put out is, uh, that, well, I'll get to this in a second, but we did actually, we'll go here. Uh, and if we go to D and D beyond, um, yeah, here it is right here. Thank you, Mr. Rex. Uh, we know you have questions about the OGL and we will be sharing more soon. Thank you for your patience. That was 29 minutes ago. They put that out. So it's an announcement of an announcement, which again, routinely does not go well. But our good friends over at Cobalt Press have decided to throw their hat into the ring or raise their flag, as it were. And being some of my favorite people in the whole world... And putting out some of my absolute favorite content. People that I have been working with for almost, God, six, eight years at this point. Long before my channel was anything, Cobalt Press was reaching out to me asking if I wanted to playtest their monsters for Tome of Beasts 1 on my live stream. Which at the time was on Twitch. We had maybe 300 followers, maybe I was a complete nobody, and Cobalt Press saw what I was doing and said, hey, we want to work with you, and I have never regretted that ever. Cobalt Press is some, again, I love them. A ton of my friends work there. I've met and had countless conversations with Wolfgang Bauer, head of, head of Cobalt Press. He is a delight. I've worked with them. Some of my, my, my monsters are in the Tome of Beasts 3, uh, maybe I'll do a video on that if you guys are curious. But they said they are committed to open gaming in the tabletop community. This means Cobalt Press will release its current Kickstarter projects as planned, including Campaign Builder Cities and Towns, which is already printed and on its way to backers this winter. In particular, Deep Magic Volume 2 will remain fully compatible with the 5e rules. We are working with our virtual tabletop partners to maintain support for digital platforms. Deep Magic is in the process of being released on Kickstarter. I actually have got an email from Cobalt Press, I think this morning, about like some promo stuff, so be on the lookout for that. As we look ahead, it, come, it becomes even more important for our actions to represent our values. While we wait to see what the future holds, we are moving forward with clear-eyed work on a new core fantasy tabletop rule set, available, open, and subscription-free for those who love it, codename Project Black Flag. All Kobolds look forward to the continued evolution of tabletop gaming. We aim to play our part in making the game better for everyone. Rest assured, Cobalt Press intends to maintain a strong presence in the tabletop RPG community. We are not going anywhere. To receive further announcements and register to playtest this new core fantasy rule set, please sign up via this form. I'm going to do that right after this. Join the Cobalt Press community in our official Discord to unlock new secrets about our upcoming project. Help us hashtag raise the flag. And there is a Black Flag RPG account that I would recommend you follow on Twitter. And you can see they have hashtag raise the flag and hashtag open D&D. As they know, 
it's about open gaming. And regardless of what Wizards of the Coast does, I feel like I may end up probably just switching over to this. Or there actually are a couple other in the works um, open source RPGs being designed and written. Um, ways to be distinct enough for Wizards of the Coast, but easy enough to transition if you're a, fi a fifth edition creator or player. Uh, and who knows, right? One of these could become the new Pathfinder to D and D. And I mean, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts because I'm I'm torn, but I but not I guess. So realistically, Wizards of the Coast blew a lot of goodwill by letting the state of everything just fester for several days without even. Uh, well, one they put themselves in this position in the first place. So let's set that out and say that. Now, again, we'll see what ultimately comes out uh, as time goes on. But uh, can they win you back? Can Wizards of the Coast win you back? And what would it take? Realistically, an apology, which I don't see happening. Um, they need to fully revert everything to the OGL 1.0a as it stood previously. They'd need to update the 5th edition or 1D&D, whatever it's going to be called, SRD to basically update it hasn't been touched since 2015 i would say you need to add the artificer to that i would say you need to make it basically a promise that if you are going to update to whatever sixth edition one D D ultimately is that that will be updated the 1.0 a or not even the 1.0 a that'll stay the same the srd will update to include that new information that might be enough but you realistically they've burnt a lot of bridges and like again I have, thankfully, I'm in a situation, and it also not thankfully, because it kind of sucks. I was in the process of looking to potentially this year make the transition to content creation full time. Things have been continuing to go well. Um, the channel has continued to grow. The play button right there kind of attests to that. And I was like, you know what? I might make the jump to content creation full time this year. I'm really excited. And now I don't think that can happen, but I'm also lucky enough to have a full-time job outside of content creation, which does make content creation a little difficult at times, but also it makes, I have a backup to fall back on. Whereas some of my friends who've been in this content creation game, they might've transitioned away to full-time content creation over the past couple of years. They're in the process of wondering what they're gonna do for a job, right? They've been living like this for years on this thing that they thought was I don't want to say ironclad, but it's been in effect for 20 years. Why would it change now? I don't know. I mean, you know, I wanted to go see the D&D movie. I was excited about the D&D movie. I really wanted to go see that. I was really pumped about it. Am I excited about it now? Not so much. Uh, do I want to support the D&D movie? I don't know. Uh, you know, it's like, do I want to support? Do I want to continue to play D&D games here on my channel? I don't know. It, it's like it promotes D and D, but it also doesn't promote D and D. Like I'm just playing games with my friends, uh, and like if we enjoy playing the game, it's it's one of those weird situations where like if we like playing D and D, and we might try other games and find out that we still like D and D the best, do we want to keep playing it because of what Wizards is doing? I don't know. It, I, I know a lot of people will say there's other games out there, and like I don't disagree. It's true, but a lot of people like to just play D&D. I don't know. It, it's a weird situation. I'm very curious to see what they have to say. Obviously, no, you'll be. I'll be covering it in full as best as I can. But we'll see what happens, folks. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.